thank you for letting me know. All right, turn your hymn books to 53, 5, 3, oh, for a thousand tongues to sing, my great Redeemer's praise. Verse number one, stand if you can, uh, oh, for a thousand sung, tongues to sing, my great Redeemer's praise. Let's sing one and five, one and five, one and five of that. Number 53. Sing another one. Amen. All right, turn the page uh, 573, Onward Christian Soldiers. 573, Onward Christian Soldiers. We'll sing verses 1 and 4. All right, 573, Onward Christian Soldiers. Sing out. seen it? Amen, 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 amen. All right, I had something so exciting happen to me after church this morning. Uh, I was out in the hallway here, and I'm not going to tell you who, but you just got to know. You can come up to me afterwards, and I'll tell you. But uh, a dear lady uh, stopped me, and she said, I got something I'm going to start doing. I thought, oh, my, what, and you, you know, I don't know what to work. And she grabbed her purse. I go, oh, man, I'm in trouble now, all right? <laughs> and she, she opened her purse up, and Brother Jimmy, she pulled out about 70 tracks, 70 of our tracks. She said, I'm going to start going and giving these out and talking to people, amen? Woo, glory to God. You want to get the preacher all excited and pumped up, amen? <laughs> and that's, that's glory, hallelujah. It, yeah, you know what? Y'all go and do that likewise, all right, amen? <laughs> That's good. That encourages me. Amen. That's a blessing. Well, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's praying time, and uh, we're going to pray. Um, do you mind me mentioning your prayer request for your brother? All right, okay. I want y'all to write down Tony's brother uh, and just pray for him. Uh, Jeremy Gerard. He came here when he was a little fella riding on a bus, I guess, but uh, 
Tony and Joanne spent some time with him yesterday, and, and Tony just doesn't believe he's saved. So y'all write his name down and pray for him. You know what? Many prayers lifted to heaven. Amen. Jeremy Gerard. Let's, let's lift him up to God. Um, Tony just shared with me that Davian has been put back on life support. So let's, let's really pray for him. He just told me that. Uh, and do pray for Ed, his brother. Uh, Ed, they think it's his heart. They, they, they think it's his heart or his chest. chest. Lung, maybe a lung, okay. So pray for his brother, Ed. He's going to be going to VA in Birmingham. Uh, do remember uh, Sandy Moss. She's in a bad, bad place physically. Uh, she's at UAB. Brother Henderson's got an appointment this week. My mother's got one. Miss Jane's got either three or four. <laughs> Sounded like four when she told me. Um, do pray for them. And um, do pray for Miss uh, Usher's daughter, Beth. Uh, Andrew's going Friday to Montgomery, and I'm assuming that's going to be a meeting where he finds out a lot of details of what, what's going to happen. And uh, so... Y'all pray for Andrew and lift him up to the Lord. And um, other people connected to our church uh, that are not well, Diane Peters' sister, Brenda Long, remember her. Mary Morrison, remember Mary. Keep praying for Tony, his health. Pray for Jimmy's uh, sister-in-law, Joyce. And um, many have unspoken. If you do, raise your hand. Amen. Now, what about additional? Anybody got an additional one? All right, Miss Jane. My goodness. Well, let's pray for Miss Doris. I saw another hand. Yes. Jada's traveling Friday. So you're going to get in your car by yourself and head west. <laughs> How many of y'all think Jada needs a cowboy hat? All right, she's going to Texas. All right, we got to get her a cowboy hat. <laughs> if you get one, Jada, I want a picture. All right, uh, yes. Okay, write this down. Isaiah Flynn is having surgery on his foot. July, yeah, she told me, July the 3rd. And I know that's on a Monday because July 4th is on a Tuesday. Ma'am? Uh, that's probably it. That's probably it. Uh, pray for Isaiah and his surgery. And so you're going to have knee surgery July 3rd. We can go ahead and start praying for you too. Amen. Yeah, the Hans and McWhorters are traveling the last part of the week. So pray for them to have safety. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer unless somebody else has got one. Yes, we've got two. Uh, who now? Oh, my. Kinsley. Oh, me. Miss Stale. All right, let's pray for Tommy Stale. And I don't want to rush. Let's keep praying for Nancy. Good to see you. Anybody else? All right, let's pray. Now, y'all don't let the preacher do all the praying. Y'all pray too, okay? Let's all go to the God right now. Lord, we ask you to bless Miss Nancy. God, be with little Davian. He's precious, Lord. Little children are precious in your sight. God, bless him and touch him. And God, be with his family. God, we lift up uh, Grace Bird and, and Diane McDonald. God, please be with Tony's brother, Ed. God, we ask you to touch him physically. Be with Sandy Moss. God, I ask you to bless Jeremy Gerard. God, you open his heart 
to you. God, please be with Tommy Stell this week and Brenda Long and, and Mary Morrison. Be with Miss Jane and her many appointments. God bless Brother Henderson as he has an appointment. My mother and her heart doctor. God, we pray for Isaiah Flynn and Miss Betty Connor and Beth Robertson. God, we ask you to be with Miss Doris. And God, please help her blood pressure to stay down. God, be with Andrew Wallace. We pray for your direction and guidance. Bless Tony Gerard and his health. God, we ask you to please be with Mary Morrison, Brenda Long, and Audrey Tidwell. God, tonight, speak to our hearts. God, help us. We need you. And uh, Lord, I pray that the word of God would be what we need tonight. I know it's, it's exactly what we need if we'll open our heart to it. And God, I, I ask you to bless the Hans McWhorters and their traveling this week. Give them safety. We love you, Lord, and we thank you that you're a God that cares. And Lord, we're going to bring to you our nation. We are so burdened for America. God, we're so burdened for our country where it is. Uh, it seems like, God, that every generation is becoming less and less acquainted with the Bible and your truth and who Jesus is and so God help us to keep going with the bus routes help us to keep going with our soul winning and Lord I'm so excited about that dear lady that showed me all those tracks and she's going to be given out Lord bless her and help her provide her needs God, we need more soul winners. God, give us the anointing of God to go and win souls to you. Bless tonight, Lord, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's sing again. Oh, don't worry about that. All right. That gives me permission to take mine off. Yeah. All right. Go ahead and turn to page 46, Jesus and me. We'll sing verses 1 and 3. Page 46, Jesus and Me, we'll sing verses 1 and 3. Page uh, 46, Jesus and Me, and stay seated on this one. All right, page 46. Sing out. I'm, I'm gonna give you a homework assignment, but you got to do it in the next three or four minutes. Okay, <laughs> I want you to take the bulletin and look in the inside at this at this insert. Okay, now in a minute I'm gonna ask you who can you invite this week to this service 
that you think there's more than a 50-50 chance they might be here, all right? Who can you invite? Uh, and, and even if you don't get a 50-50 chance, just go ahead and invite them anyway. Um, I've got a few I've already talked to, and I'm going to ask you in just a minute. Good preaching, good singing, and some good food. So that's next Sunday at 5. Uh, LCA teachers and staff. LCA teachers and staff, we're going to meet for just a few minutes after the service, okay? Just a few minutes. I mentioned this morning, I'm going to mention it again, uh, do be praying. We've got a, a need out here on our property, um, and, you know, it's none of our doing. It's just the years and years of uh, wear and tear and rust uh, have collapsed quite a few of these culvert pipes and um, we've had a lot of help getting it to a point to where we can get it fixed and a great big help uh, by a grandpa uh, one of, of some of our students has offered to do all the the labor with a track hoe but we're gonna have to buy some culvert so pray about it uh, i'd rather you if you had to choose between praying and giving i'd rather you pray all right because god can take care of it but I'd rather you, if, if my rathers would be you pray and give, all right? So whatever, we're going to have an offering on Father's Day. Uh, I, this is a manly type job, so I figure, yeah, we'll do it Father's Day. And give if you can. If you can't give, don't worry about it. Don't, we're not going to worry if you can't give. Give if you can. Uh, and if you can give more, give more. And if you can give a little, give a little. But just pray about it. Um, we really need probably a minimum of 60 feet. Uh, that's a minimum we could use more but uh, that's going to cost us um, up around four to five thousand dollars at least so just pray about it and uh, God supplied so far we're going to keep trusting the supply pray for uh, the absolute truth ministries and brother Gerald Rice and his outreach to reach um, people in prison and on college campuses um, do remember uh, to pray for the services next Sunday, especially this Sunday night service, special service, and pray for camp. We met with some people after church this morning, just came through, and uh, we knew they were going, but we found out another young person is going. So we got another one going, and uh, so God, is, God has given us a good group that's going to camp. And uh, so pray about that. Anybody that you know that might be interested, and if you'd like to help a camper, that'd be great. If you haven't yet given to help with the food pantry, um, I'd encourage you to. It'd be a blessing. It's a blessing to get to help people um, that just need some food. And we were able to do that yesterday. And, um, you know, that's, I, I think that's important. And so uh, give if you can uh, to do that. Now, some people, if you want to do this, you say, I'd rather not go buy some things. I'd just like to give some money. You can do that. Put it in an envelope. Put it on the outside food pantry, and we'll try to take that money and buy the things that's needed with it. All right, uh, we're going to sing again, and then right after we sing, I'm going to ask you who you're going to invite for next Sunday night. So let's sing. All right, get your handbook and turn to page 396. Do Lord, page 296, Do Lord. We'll sing both verses. And ladies, you just go on the other, uh, second verse. We won't stop. 396, Do Lord. We'll sing both verses, all right? Stand up, 396. I've got a home in glory land that outside's the sun. I've got a home in glory land that outside's the sun. I've got a home in glory land that outside the sun, way beyond the blue. Do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do remember me. Do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do remember me. Do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do remember me. Way beyond the blue. I took Jesus as my Savior. I took Jesus as my Savior, you take him too. I took Jesus as my Savior, you take him too. While he's calling you. Do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do remember me. Do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do remember me. Do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do remember me. Way beyond the blue. 
Amen. Go around and shake everybody's hands. Uh, Scott, you're late. Hey, you know what, Miss Doris? And not many people would go to the ER and then still go to church on Sunday night. You're a special person. You know that? You are something else. I told Miss Doris, there are not many people that go to the ER and still go to church on Sunday night. She's at the ER this afternoon. God bless her. All right, everybody, I got, a, I got some business to take care of. Hurry, hurry, hurry. This group, let me tell you about this group. These folks love the Lord. They come here. They don't just come and sing and eat. Uh, they always want to work. Two years ago, they were up at the gym the Monday or Tuesday after they sang, and they painted. They painted the, the y'all remember when the restrooms got painted? They're the ones that did it. They, they painted the restrooms up there. They painted doors. They, painted, they did all kinds of work. Last year, they put this fence up for us. Uh, they did most of the work. This fence that we got outside the kitchen, they, they got that. I bought it, and they put it up. So uh, they're workers. I got, a, I got a work schedule already written out for them, things I want to do. So I want us to, Brother Bachman and these guys, they travel all over the country. And I want us to have a good crowd here, good good group of people. So real quickly, you got somebody you're going to invite. Somebody try to be here next Sunday night. Just tell me who. And uh, I've already, Tony and I have already invited Jimmy Butler. So we're praying for Jimmy. So y'all pray for him. Who else has got somebody you're going to invite? Carol, wonderful. Anybody else got somebody you can invite? Yes. Yeah, Bob. Hey, Bob might be here. Um, yes, yes. And, and talk to him again. Invite him again. Bob will be here. Uh, also, um, I've got preach some preacher friends, and they don't have Sunday night services. So I've invited some of them to try to be here. Their church don't have church on Sunday night. So, yes, sir. Yes, wonderful. Good. Anybody else? Got some, what who? Yes, amen. Good. Anybody else? Now y'all be y'all take this home, mother. Good, 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 good. Oh, good. That'd be great. Good. Good. Does Brooke like watermelon? <laughs> it's funny. Some of our girls like watermelon, some of them didn't, all right. I could probably eat my weight in it, all right? <laughs> I love me some watermelon. Anybody else? Now, look, take it as a homework project. I'm going to invite some people to this service. And I'm serious. Take a picture of that flyer, send it to people, and say, we're going to have a special service. I really want you to come and be my guest and uh, come hear these guys sing. And uh, y'all try to invite some people to be here. Do we have anybody this week has a birthday? Or an anniversary. May 21st through 27th. Nobody born or married this week <laughs> that that's here. All right, we're going to come, come on sing. And remember, we pray at the end. So we'll come, we'll pray at the end. We'll gather here at the front. We'll pray. And then we'll meet with our school staff after we pray.
hey, y'all know everybody's got their own way to heaven. All these religions, all the, everybody's got a way to heaven. We're going to sing about the way to heaven tonight. Amen. So y'all listen as we sing. All right, am I on? Yeah, 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 yeah. We've been doing these recipes <laughs> on Sunday night, and I just asked the Lord to help me know what to preach, and got another one, and we're going to look at it tonight. So I'm going to give, I'm going to go ahead and give you where we're going to wind up. I don't know if that's a southern term or not. Wind up. We're going to wind up. In Psalm 27, that's where we're going to wind up, but we're not going to be there yet. I want to help you till we get there. I want to give a little Bible about, about what I want to give the recipe about tonight. But we'll, as I said, we'll wind up at Psalm 27. I want to give the recipe for conquering fear. Conquering fear. And I think this little introduction will help you understand why fear is something we need to conquer. Now, there are different kinds of fear. And I'm going to go ahead and say that before I pray. I'm going to have a little prayer time myself because I just need to talk to God. The Bible talks about the fear of the Lord. And when the Bible talks about the fear of the Lord, it says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is a... Whenever the fear of the Lord is mentioned in the Bible, it is a good thing. When you read the phrase, fear of the Lord, what it means is a proper reverence and respect for God. And you know what? We have lost that in our country in a big way. Most folks, you know, I, I know a lot of you know this, but a long time ago, in America, people who didn't know God, people who were unsaved and even just blasphemers, they had sort of a respect for God. And we seem to have lost that. That fear of the Lord is a good thing. But we're talking tonight about a fear that's in our heart that's not good. So I'm going to pray, and then I'm go ahead and turn to 2 Timothy. There's a few of these verses I want you to see. 
2 Timothy chapter 1. What I'm going to do, I'm going to start, I'm going to answer three questions about fear. I'm going to answer three questions about fear and then we're going to go to Psalm 27 and look for the recipe to conquer fear. Everybody in here has been afraid and had fear in your heart. Um, when you get that bad news, when you something's happened that you weren't expecting to happen. So let's pray. Lord, I, I ask you, Holy Spirit, help me to obey you. Help me to say what I need to say and not say anything I need to leave out. And I want to help God. And I, I certainly need you right now. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, 2 Timothy 1, 2 Timothy 1 and verse number 7. Let me answer three questions. And I'm going to turn to make sure I'm, I'm giving you what I need to give you. The first question is, where does fear come from? And the answer I want you to look at is verse 7, 2 Timothy 1, 7. Y'all got it? It starts with the word for. You there? Say Amen. Right, for God hath not given us the spirit of fear. You notice the way God phrases that? The spirit of fear. Fear is a spirit. God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So the fear that grips our heart that makes us be afraid of a circumstance or some news or a phone call or a situation that's come upon my family or on me doesn't come from God. Matter of fact, 1 John 4 says this. I love this. 1 John 4, 18 says, There is no fear in love. And who does the Bible say God is what? Love. So God's not the one bringing the fear on you. There's no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear. So the obvious answer, where does fear come from? It's a spirit. It comes from Satan. It comes from the devil. Okay? Um, he'll bring fear on your heart that you're going to fail. How many of you know this? Some people never try things because they're afraid they're going to fail. Okay? Afraid they'll fail. My preacher talked to me when I was either 17 or 18. I can't remember. It all blends together in my brain. But he talked to me when I was 17 or 18 years old. I did the same thing to Brother Jeff when this happened. He talked to me. He said, I want you to work on a bus route. I was either 17 or 18 years old. Yeah, I remember when I talked to Brother Jeff about take, when Brother Danny Flippo was going to go off to college to be a preacher. And I asked Brother Jeff to pray about it. I said, wow. You, you're afraid you'll fail. I was 17 or 18. And I don't know how I did on that bus route. You know, what can a teenager do on a bus route? I learned a lot. And there was a young man that, that came every Sunday and respected me and got saved and when I moved back to Gwen here, he ran up on me and met me, and, and he was working for a building supply, and since then, he's gone to heaven. So I think, and I know there were, there were uh, another man that ran a bread truck. His family got saved. Another man uh, was reached for the Lord, and, and I was saying, I did this. God did it. Amen. But I praise God. Oh, devil, say, you'll fail. He'll give you that spirit of defeat. Uh, there's sometimes a spirit of rejection. You know, Jesus said, I, I'm not going to leave you nor forsake you. He's not going to do that. Sometimes people fear death. Um, you know, the Bible talks about that. Oh, death, where's thy sting? Oh, grave, where's thy victory? The sting of death is sin. The strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who giveth us the victory through our who? Lord Jesus Christ. I know none of us want to die tonight. Okay, I'm okay with that. Um, I, I, I think of the story of the old guy that's in church and the preacher's talking about how many are ready to die and go to heaven and everybody raised their hand but this one guy 
And after church, the preacher solemnly went over to him and said, Sir, I know she didn't raise your hand that you were ready to die and go to heaven. And he looked up the preacher and said, Preacher, I'm sorry. I thought you was getting a bus load up tonight. <laughs> And I know none of us want to go now, amen, but you ought not fear it, amen. So it doesn't come from God. Number two, when do we fear? When do we fear? The opposite of fear is faith. Yes, thank you. Faith. Faith. Trust. I'm still amazed. Every time you think about that story in the Bible of Jesus walking on the water to the disciples in the storm, and he's walking, and then they say, hey, who, is that a ghost out there? And then all of a sudden, they, it's Jesus. And the 12 in the boat, Peter, what possessed Peter to say, Lord, if that's you, you let me walk to you. Who would have ever thought about, let me get out there with you? You know, but he did. And lo and behold, he walked on the water. But then we know, I said this morning, he saw the waves and wind boisterous. But then later on, here's what it says. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? And so he got afraid because his faith faltered. So when our faith falters, we fear. You remember the story of Adam and Eve after they sinned? And the Lord calls for them. They had given in. They had given in to the temptation of sin. Genesis 3.10 says, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid why because they'd sin we will we will fear when we know we've sinned and that's an easy solve right there amen we confess our sin he's faithful and just to forgive us our sin amen and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness you may have friends and family who hold grudges and never want to forgive but our god is not like that amen if we go to him in a sincere heart confessing our sin he is faithful and just he does it every time amen to forgive us and praise god for that's the kind of god we have so fear comes when our faith weakens fear comes when we let sin rule and then fear comes when we try to get our fulfillment of life in anything other than the Lord. How many of you know people that got to have a hobby? They got to have something going on. And they'll go from one hobby to another one, to another one, and to another one, and to another one. And there's nothing wrong with distractions and things that sort of help you get your mind off of things. I, I, I love fooling with stuff that's growing. I, I, I like a lot of different things like that. I, I like working with plants in the yard and piddling like that. But this is what Jesus said, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth give I unto you. Neither let your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Because we're trusting in him and our, our satisfaction is in him. And so that's when it comes. Last question, then we're going to go to the recipe. How does fear affect us? How does it affect us? The verse I want you to write down is Proverbs 29, 25. And this is not the fear of the Lord. Matter of fact, Proverbs 29, 25 says this, the fear of man, the fear of man bringeth a snare. You might know what a snare is. When you, you boys were little, when you men were little, did you ever try to catch an animal? <laughs> try to have, you know, pull a tree down and get a little loop in the ground, uh, 
try to catch a rabbit. I never did catch anything, all right, you know. Um, we, my brothers and I thought about digging a big pit, you know, and trying to catch them, but we never could figure out how to do that. But uh, That's what a snare is. A snare is something that catches you. There are things that we fear about other people. Our reputation or what they say or what, hey, look, when you decide, I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided. You know, you don't worry about what everybody thinks. Amen? I'm not going to let the fear of man grip me. Amen? I'm going to let it happen. Don't do that. All right, so let's go to Psalm 27. Here's the recipe. And if you look in your Bible, Psalm 27 is 14 verses. And I, I'm not going to get into a long, it's just going to be a simple recipe. But it's good. It's good. The first three verses is like an introduction. So let's read the first three verses. The Lord is my light. And you, if your Bible says this, it's the Psalm of David. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Boy, you got to get that settled. Amen. He's my light. He's my salvation. Look at it. Whom shall I what? Fear. If God is the one you're depending on, who's bigger than God? Who's stronger than God? Who's mightier than God? The answer is nobody. Amen. The Lord is my strength, is the strength of my life. Now I know there's times when we don't think we have any strength, but the Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I what? Be afraid. So two times in verse one, David says, My goodness, I'm not going to be afraid. When the wicked, even mine enemies, and my foes came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. And David had some enemies. Though a host should encamp against me, a host is a big army. A host of an army should encamp against me. My heart, look at there, my heart shall not fear. And that's where fear will grip us in our heart. My heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. Now let's look at the recipe. What's the recipe to not be afraid of? of circumstances, not be afraid of things that can happen around us, uh, that pain you get in your chest, that pain you get in your head, uh, whatever, that, that phone call that upsets you. Here's the recipe to not let... Now, fear may affect us for a little bit, but don't let it conquer you, okay? Number one is found in verse 4 and 5. And very simply, verse 4 and 5 is stay close to the Lord. Look at it. Stay close to the Lord. One thing I have a desire to the Lord that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the what? House of the Lord. Hey, don't quit coming to church. If you have to move to an area somewhere else, you find you somewhere where there's a man of God that preaches the Bible, and you go to church. I have family members I'm talking to right now. I say, look, you need to be in a church. You need to be going to church and, and putting your body in the pew or the chair or whatever they have there, and you need to be hearing somebody preach the Bible. Amen? Go to church, the house of the Lord, all the days of my life. Why? To behold the beauty of the Lord. Now, I believe my wife is beautiful. I know she is. To, to me, she is. And the closer I get to her, the more beautiful she is. The closer you get to God, the more beautiful he'll be. Amen? So you stay close to the Lord. And fear will conquer you. It may upset you for a day or two. It may rattle you. But if you're close, you know what bothers me about this thing that's number one, Miss Rebecca? Stay close to God and fear won't conquer you. There's so many people that I meet that treat the Lord like a spare tire. And what I mean by that is, 
How often do you think of your spare tire? When in an emergency, in a crunch. They get in their car, they go. They get in their car, they go. And that's how they treat the Lord. They never think about Him. They never talk to Him. They never, they're never in their Bible. But all of a sudden, when an emergency comes, where's God? They treat Him just like a spare tire. So tonight, when y'all go out, you open your trunks and tell your spare tire you're sorry, all right? Okay? <laughs> but that's how they treat the Lord. Okay? That's not good. Stay close to the Lord. I was thinking about a hymn. I think it's number 261 in our hymn book, Near to the Heart of God. That's a sweet hymn. That's where we need to be. Near to the heart of God. Wonderful hymn. I love it. I'm going to have you jump ahead because this is still under number one. Jump ahead to verse number 10. And I don't want to bring any sorrowful thoughts to any of you, but I want to show you something. When my father and mother forsake me, then the, then the Lord will take me up. Now, I know most of us in here have never, ever had Father and mother forsake us, but bear with me, okay? And I'm not saying this to hurt anybody. But all of us know the truth of dementia and the truth of Alzheimer's. And if you've ever been in a family that's been affected by dementia or Alzheimer's, it is such a painful and hurtful thing. And a person can get to a point where they don't even know their own children. But look what the Bible says. The Lord will always be there. Amen. He will always be there. So number one, conquering fear is getting close to God. Getting close to Him. And when you first get saved, God is sort of an acquaintance. Okay? And I, I'm going to use my wife and I as illustration. I met my wife. Uh, when we were very young, <laughs> and uh, I don't remember, how old were you, huh? 18. I was 19 then. And I, I think the first time we actually met was at that missions retreat, right? I, I think that's right. She knows, she can remember a lot better than me, all right? But I, I think we were at a missions retreat, and I, she caught my eye. And at that point, I was trying to, she worked on campus as a waitress, and uh, we were required, this was back in the Stone Age, all right? We were required to go to every meal on campus unless we were working. And so she worked as a waitress. You have two tables? Every waitress had two tables. I would always try to get there and get on one of her tables. You know, I wanted to at least be close to her. And uh, we were just acquaintance then. I remember uh, at that point we were just acquaintance I try to get her eye, you know, and and one night we were walking back to the boys' dorm. This one guy said, "I'm gonna ask that girl out that was our waitress." I said, "No, you don't. If you do, I'm gonna smack you, man. I'm I'm taking you down. Don't even think about it." And he didn't. I scared I scared him. All right. <laughs> but then, as we got to know each other, I got up enough nerve to ask her out, you know, just a date. And we got closer. We got to know each other. That's the way it is with God. You get to know Him. Amen. And you feel more, you feel more comfortable talking to God. Right? And then we, our relationship grew to love. You will grow to love God. You will grow where you, if you miss your time with God, it's like there's a hole in your day. Because you love Him and you want to be with Him. And then... We got serious. We started talking about, you know, what ifs and the future. And then I, I was the weirdest thing the way I asked her to marry me. I wasn't prepared. I didn't I have a ring or nothing. Dumb. But I knew in my heart that it was right. And I went and I got a ring later. And then it, and it wasn't a good ring. I later got a real nice ring. Amen. Later. She's got a lot better ring now. 
but, but that's a commitment. And see, that's where we need to get with God. We need to get with God, I'm going to serve you. And I'm going to be there. Boy, that's really getting what? Close to God. God, you can depend on. Amen. All right, second part of the formula. Number one, get close to God, and fear won't conquer you. Let me give you the other, uh, the other three real quickly, and I'm not going to keep you long. And I love this one. Go to verse number six. And now shall my head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. Therefore I will offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing. Number two, sing. We don't sing enough. Sing. Sing. The songs we sing at church ought to be sung by God's people during the week. We don't need to get in our vehicles with some CD or whatever you put on there and all, or some radio station that's got the bump, the bump, bump, bump. We need to sing God's songs. And if we will sing unto the Lord, fear will be conquered. Amen. Do you know that Psalms is a songbook? Uh, I'm going to have you turn to a couple of them. Turn to Psalm 89. And hold your place in 27. We're going to run right back to it. But I, I just got to show you these. Psalms is a songbook. Psalm 89 and verse number 1. Y'all there? Psalm 89 and verse number 1. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing. I will sing. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord. With my mouth will I make known thy faithfulness, thy faithfulness. With my mouth will I make known thy faithfulness to all generations i will sing of the mercies of the lord forever i will sing of the mercies of the lord we ought to sing uh look real quick psalm 104 psalm 104 and you don't have to sing the psalms but have a song on your heart if you do not have a hymn book at your house, we have some hymn books that we replace these with. I mean, these, these we bought a few years ago. We have some older hymn books that I'll give you one to take home. You need to sing God's songs. Psalm 104, verse 33. Psalm 104, verse 33. I will sing unto the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God. While I have my being, I will sing unto the Lord. I will sing praise to my God. I will sing praise to my God. It's just so much. You know, it drives away the fear. It really does. Singing is a way to drive away the fear. So number one, get close to God. Number two, sing. And I've got a lot more I could say, but I'm going to give you number three. And then I may just allude to number four. Because one, two, and three is really the recipe. And I love this one. It's verse number seven. When you're afraid, make sure you're close to God. When you're afraid, sing. And number seven, when you're afraid, get somewhere Get somewhere and cry aloud to God. Verse number 7. Y'all got your Bible in verse number 7? What does it say? Hear, O Lord, when I what? Cry with my what? Voice. Don't just get in a corner and whimper. I'm going to have my prayer time. <laughs> I'm praying. I'm talking to you. No, you're not. You're just sitting over there whimpering. Talk to God out loud. What do I say? God, I'm afraid. That's a good place to start, all right? Lord, I'm afraid, and I know I shouldn't be. God, help me trust in you. 
Help me, God, to trust in your word. Help me, God, to believe you and believe your promises. God, what has gripped my heart should not have gripped my heart. Lord, I need you today. And pray out loud. Now, does praying out loud make God hear you any better? No. But let me tell you what it does do. When you pray out loud, you hear yourself praying. And it builds your faith. But I'm talking to God and he's, he's listening to you. So get you somewhere where you can talk to God. Now, I'm, I'm not going to ask you to turn here. But there's another psalm that talks about crying out to God. And it's Psalm 34. Psalm 34 says, I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. That's verse 4 and 5. And then down in verse, um, let's see. Yes. They looked unto him and were lightened and their faces were not ashamed. And then if you jump down to 34... Uh, 17, 34, 17, it says, The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth and delivereth them out of all their troubles. The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth and delivereth. Now, I like that word deliver. Amen. God delivers us. He comes through. Now, this is not really part of the recipe, but I'm going to add it on. So you can just add it on to the end. Whenever fear grips your heart and you try to get close to God and you want to be close to God and you seek to be close to God and then you take some time and you sing and you cry out to God at the end of everything, go down to verse 11. When fear has come upon you, one of the things you ought to do at the end is say, now God, you teach me. You teach me through this fear and through what you've done. You teach me and you lead me. You teach me and lead me. And then I don't want to finish without at least reading verse 13 tonight. That's verse 11. Verse 13 is faith. And none of this will work without trusting God. In verse 13, Psalm 27, 13, is one of the greatest verses in the Bible on what real faith is. You ever heard anybody say, if I see it, I'll believe it? Y'all heard that? If I see it, I'll believe it. That is exactly opposite of the way a Christian ought to live. You believe God, and then he shows it to you. The re read 13. I had fainted. By the way, y'all know what the word fainted means, don't you? It means I'd have quit. I'd have quit on God. I'd have quit on God. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. You've got to believe first. That's why you need to stay in your Bible. Trust that book. Love that book. Stay in the Bible. Believe it. All right, just a couple of illustrations. When Daniel was told he couldn't pray, he didn't see anything. He just believed. He said, I'm going back home, and I'm going to go to my room, and I'm going to open my window toward Jerusalem, and I'm going to pray as I have all my life. I don't care what they said about a lion's den. I'm just going to serve God. And then they, the tattletales came and heard him praying. Oh, he's broke the law. They've got to throw him in the lion's den. He didn't know the lions wouldn't eat him. He just believed God. I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do. And the lions got locked jaw. They didn't, want, they didn't say, I don't like, we didn't have Daniel on the menu tonight. I'm sorry, we don't like Daniel. They got locked jaw and they didn't eat him all night. And of course, the king was all upset about this because he was tricked into to, to signing that law. He was up all night. The rice was up all night. Oh, no, my, my friend Daniel's down there, and the lions are eating him up. And when it was time, he said, oh, Daniel, is your God able? He said, my God's able. Amen. He said, come on out of there. And then he took the men who tricked him into signing that law and threw them in. And the Bible says before they hit the floor, the lions had their meal. 
Daniel didn't know. He believed first. Amen. Just believe God. He'll show it to you. Amen. The recipe for not fearing, stay close to God. Sing. Amen. And not just at church, sing. Sing in your time with God. And then cry out to God. Get somewhere where you can talk to God and tell him that you need him. Amen. And he will come through. Well, let's have our prayer time. I encourage you, if you can, to come. We're going to pray. We're going to pray for our families. We're going to pray for the weak. Uh, and I want to just say this, and I'm not bragging, I'm, and, and I, want, I don't want you all to think I'm, I'm bragging on family, but my mother's a dear member of our church, and God has laid it on my mother's heart. Um, and she, she makes three or four cakes a week. And she says, I'm believing God to send us visitors. And since she started making these cakes, God's bringing us visitors. Amen. One of the, one of the men that was here got a cake this morning. He said, wow, I wasn't expecting this. <laughs> so you got a niche somewhere. Find your niche. Amen. Find your niche and what you can do, what you can do for the Lord. And let's believe God for some answers this week. Let's trust God for some answers. He's able. Amen. Brother Hunt, if you don't mind, pray for us. Pray for God to do some healing. Pray for God to come through to save the lost. we got family members here that are not saved, people we know. So let's pray for God to do some mighty things. Lord, God, we need you. Please, God, we stay here. God, please. Jesus, God, please. Please, Lord. Show us your body power. God, we need you.
Yes, Lord. God help. Yes, Lord. Amen. Don't forget Wednesday night. We'll see you. Yeah. Uh, teachers. Yes, ma'am. Mother. Yeah, they, I need to mention that. They're the egg suppliers. <laughs> they are supplying. And you know what? you got to have eggs to make cakes. Amen. And well, I guess the chickens are the egg suppliers. Amen. <laughs> but it, it comes through Bill and Nancy.